Hi, my name is Jonathan Halverson, Global VP of Consumer Experience at Mondelez International, and I'm thrilled to be joining MMA Impact India today to talk about a topic that I'm quite passionate about, which is unlocking the potential of personalization. I think one of the greatest levers of growth over the next five, 10 years will be personalization. By better tailoring our messages to consumers in the right way, we can create exponential growth. And I'd like to start by telling you about our journey in personalization, where we're at, where we're going, and share some of that work and hope that we can all as a collective community continue to push this practice farther along. Our journey with Mondali started back in 2017. When I joined the company, I had recently left Twitter and I had seen firsthand how very small nimble companies in the video gaming space, mobile applications and finance were eating the big guys lunch because they were just being more agile and smarter about how they tailored messages to distinct audiences. Inspired by that, we launched our own vision for personalization at Mondelez, which we collectively coined personalization at scale. And personalization at scale was really all about how we could take the ability to combine technology and data to uniquely connect with consumers at heroic volume. It was our first step into the space. And ultimately, it was a big step for us because many CPG companies at the time still believed that ultimately mass communication was going to be the most effective by taking one message and producing it as efficiently as possible and sharing it with as many people as possible, you could create growth. And this was a big step change for where we were in CPG at the time. And overall, we found out that we were really on to something. We've done award-winning work across all 14 of Mondelez's BUs across our wide portfolio of brands and seen some really powerful work come through in equity. But even equally important is just seeing and sensing that we had, we had the data to prove it. Our data showed that ultimately personalized communications were consistently outperforming non-personalized communications. And while we were improving over time, we knew that we had still some other gears to tap into. And through all this test and learn, we learned an absolute lot. Because as you go out and you do pilots and you do work in local markets and your marketers get dirty with it, you're gonna learn some very important lessons that I'd love to share with this group. The first one is, it's really important to put people ahead of personas. When you start out in personalization, it's very easy to get caught up in personas. And if you put segments too far ahead of the idea, what you find is that you ultimately get work that's very mirroring. Ultimately, you'll have a group of millennial moms, and so you'll show an ad of millennial moms, and it very quickly kind of gets very boring, and somehow the brand equity and the specialness is lost. The second lesson that we learned is you can't personalize brands to plant. Very early in our journey, we got very caught up with having just scale. Uh, and, you know, we just weren't really thinking about how we would really build the equity. And so mindless personalization can really dilute the brand and somehow you forget what the equity is as you do it. The third thing is, is quality is more important than volume. A large variety of tactics can drive efficiencies, but ultimately what really matters is the quality of that personalization. How closely are you aligned to their empathy patterns? not just simply the volume of it so you get as close to the person. And that was something that was a big takeout. And then the last one is that you have to have true open collaboration. When we started this, we would have an agency out in front or this partner here, or we weren't necessarily briefing everyone at once. And while we understood that, you know, like everyone needs to be at the table, it's not enough to appoint a lead agency. Rather, everyone needs to be involved from production to media to creative and even our joint business partners at Google and Facebook sitting around the table with Mondelez. So these were kind of some big important lessons that we learned. And we said, you know what, we think that we can take it a step further and that it was time to go a step further because ultimately what we were achieving with personalization at scale was working, but we recognized that there was a higher tier that we could achieve. And so I'd like to share with you a short video that's gonna talk about what our vision is for how we take personalization to the next level, something we call empathy at scale. So if you'll indulge me, I'd like to play a short video that's gonna talk about our vision for what personalization made right looks like.
Big thank you to my friends at Ogilvy uh, for helping produce that video and really working with me on not just this video, but the larger vision. Um, so as we introduced in the video, uh, we have now kind of made a pivot in what we see personalization being. And so while we started out with personalization at scale, which was about the ability to combine technology and data to uniquely connect with consumers at heroic volume, our version 2.0, of how we do personalization at Mondelez that we're building into all of our brand building is what we call empathy at scale. And this is about creating the right connection between you and a brand that is right for you at the moment for you, the right moment for you. And really empathy at scale was born from all the learnings that we had done and just realizing that as we set some things up, we hadn't set our aspiration high enough. And based on the learnings of what we had shared, there was a better way to do things. So let's talk a bit, a little bit more specific about what empathy at scale is. Empathy at scale is about how we get closer to people's hearts. From 2012 to 2017, we had done mass communication, which was focused on having a big idea where we're targeting all with a broad message and really you thinking of media as that megaphone. We evolved to personalization at scale, which was all about how we engage with people. And admittedly, our idea was a little fragmented because we were serving specific clusters or groups of people with a customized message. Uh, and really that was kind of focused on paid media. Now what we've evolved to with empathy at scale is focused on how do we connect and convert with our consumers? How do we make sure we deliver them the right idea? And how do we ultimately make sure that how we target people is more than just basic demographics, but really based on their beliefs and behaviors so that we can deliver a relevant message uh, across all consumer touch points. And so it's a big, broad step forward for a lot of what we're doing. But when I get asked often, you know, what's the real kind of difference between e s versus personalization at scale, I come back to this simple chart. When we first launched personalization at scale, we thought that the way to build better personalization was like by putting those audience segments up front. And in our mind, that was how we be consumer centric. We're gonna think about the consumer first, we're gonna think about all the different segments. And once we figure out all those segments, that'll be part of our briefs. And that will ultimately then lead to creative messaging produced by the creative agency that serves each of these targets. And then ultimately we'll deliver that through media. And what we found was, is that yes, putting consumer segments up front can create some ROI value because you're thinking about consumers and you're thinking about the segments you wanna do, but it's really quite limiting uh, in terms of what you're gonna produce creatively. And so we saw a lot of fractured pieces. And so we went back and we talked to our agency partners and we said, ah, guys, what's going on with this? Why aren't we getting to where we wanna be? Why aren't we seeing big ideas and personalization? What's the lacking piece? And they really pointed to the fact that we needed to rework our process uh, and that this piece that we had put in were good because it was getting us to think more about consumers, but it wasn't getting us to a big idea first and therefore we're getting a fracture. So when we reworked empathy at scale, we started out with the brand foundations, which yes, starts with thinking about who the consumer is, but we don't think about the segments up front. We first get to a big creative idea, not all the executions, but just what is the big creative platform that we're gonna do? In the case of Cadbury or CDM, uh, Cadbury Dairy Milk, that's all about generosity. And once we have that, we use human insights to help us think about how we're going to segment and what we're gonna do. So by putting the segmentation more downstream in the process, we get to bigger, better ideas that ultimately then we unlock empathy through as we personalize it. And that's been just a big, it seems like a small shift, just reordering these things, but it's made a huge difference in terms of the quality of the creative work that we're able to produce in a big way. And, you know, two great examples. If you say, all right, so you've made the shift, talk to us about work that we're doing. Two really great examples. The first one is from Ogilvy and Wavemaker here in India, who have worked on Cadbury Silk and done some amazing work at EADS. And then also a team uh, from WPP in Germany, who's working on Milka. 
uh, has ultimately done the entire relaunch of the brand equity with the goals of empathy at scale in mind. I'd like to share some of the work actually from Cadbury Silk so that you can see uh, some of this work in context and see what I hope you will appreciate, which is just a much bigger idea and a richer creative territory brought to life and then tailored through really good personalization. So with that, I'm gonna play the work from our partners at Ogilvy India and what they did this year for Cadbury Silk. Over the years, Cadbury Dairy Milk Silk has become synonymous with romantic gestures. This is highlighted in our latest proposition, how far will you go for love? Now young couples who are our main audience go even further for love on Valentine's Day, their most important occasion in the year. It's also when most of them gift each other a silk. Unfortunately, celebrating Valentine's Day seemed unlikely in a pandemic year. So how could we inspire young couples to express their love this Valentine's Day? We used Empathy at Scale, a new framework that operated with our audience's truth at its core and reached out to them through highly relevant communication. Working with Google and Facebook data, we matched our audience's top moments with data signals and targeting criteria. And based on their intents, interests, and relationships, we created different versions of our idea and crafted six highly empathetic films tailored to them. Close your eyes and miss me. All films were short, sweet, and made for digital. We even added a cinematic touch to the films by creating movie posters and converted our fans' comments into movie reviews. We worked on a consumer segmenting plan that served our films to our audiences in a span of 10 days leading up to and on Valentine's Day. Did it work? It worked wonders. In a span of just a week, the films received 125 million views across platforms and over 670,000 conversations. What's more, despite a pandemic, the entire Silk portfolio achieved a massive volume growth with Silk Heart Pop leading the way with 34%. The brand also achieved a net revenue growth at 30% and a 54% increase in e-commerce sales. With this campaign, Silk empathized with young hearts and went on to become their preferred expression of love, making Valentine's Day 2021 more personal than ever before. It's awesome work uh, by Anil, the entire marketing team here in India, and also our partners at Ogilvy, just really just bringing to life, I think, what the potential of really great personalization is. And I think you see it in, so clearly in that video, rather than just creating creative ideas uh, built around segments, they really thought about the empathy patterns and that just unlocks such richer personalization and that personalization is rewarded in outstanding business results. So congratulations uh, to our team in India for just really taking it to the next level in terms of what we're doing. Um, you know, look, so far our digital journey at Mondelez has delivered. Uh, as you saw briefly in the video, you know, we continue to see just really big increases in our digital ROI. Uh, we've enjoyed outsized gains, certainly relative on a global level relative to the category. And certainly with last year being standout as we continued to scale what we were doing in personalization, our vision is that we're going to take it even further uh, with what we're doing in empathy at scale and looking to get returns well over two, $2.70 uh, simply by just really scaling this approach and really implementing it at scale across our business. So in closing, I hope that uh, you really will see that personalization with empathy at scale is personalization made right uh, and helping us live our purpose, which is to lead the future of snacking and make really snacking that's made right for everyone. In conclusion, I hope that you guys leave today's conversation uh, with a few key takeaways. First, 
I hope that you're really excited about the potential of personalization. What once started out as a strategy that was only for data-rich companies or retailers or technology is truly a platform for growth that I think almost any single business can benefit from because the consumer desire for more tailored communications is truly universal. Two, I hope that I've inspired you with a different way to do personalization, that it doesn't need to be just rudimentary mirroring where you show a young millennial mom an ad with just a millennial mom, but rather by tapping into how people's true empathy patterns, you can unlock just better creative ideas. And third, I just hope that uh, collectively we've shown you like why digital and why how data and technology can come together in the right order uh, to create bigger ideas that can truly shape culture. And I think that there's still just such rich territory to be explored in this medium. And I'm excited to see the work we're gonna do at Mondelez over the next five to 10 years and the work you're gonna do in this space. And I hope to continue that we will continue to inspire each other to create better work. Thank you so much and deep appreciation to my friends at MMA India for inviting me for this session. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts and comments. Please reach out uh, as I always love just to learn from others.